This girl gets the death penalty for murder, but instantly enjoys it when two police officers investigate a crime site. One sees that Chase Andrews, the son of a rich businessman, died. Strangely, no footprints were found. The police climb out after seeing a neighboring tower. Possibly, Chase fell from there. After reaching the peak, broken gates are found. This splits them. The first policeman thinks Chase was shoved and murdered, while the other feels it was accidental. The corpse's autopsy report appears next. It shows Chase died from the fall, but something wasn't right. He should have been discovered face down due to his injuries. Hearing this, the police instantly suspect murder. However, they have no fingerprints or proof. Luckily, the doctor knows where to start. The small red cloth he discovered on Chase's body was given to them. Later, at a pub, the police hear individuals discussing the murder case. All believe local teenager Kaya Clark is the killer. She has a poor past. With this knowledge, police travel to Kaya's residence. They find a red hat. Kaya hides in the woods. She flees, but the police capture her. They ask her why she ran. But Kaya doesn't talk. We saw her in jail afterwards. Tom Melton, a local lawyer, asks if she needs his services. However, Kaya is mute. It's almost like she's concealing something serious. Tom reveals that she will be prosecuted for murder to convince her. A court hearing is imminent, and she will be convicted. She has a crimson hat. More than enough proof. This case scares her into sharing her life. After describing her upbringing, the film flashes back. Kaya lived with her parents and four siblings in 1953. They seem like a happy family. Actually, the river verse is true. The inebriated father constantly punishes her mother without cause, so she unexpectedly departs one day. Beta, her four siblings then departed the house one by one. Kaya is alone with her drunken father. The latter hunts muscles in the marsh. Kyle attempts to help her father at work. They sell their collection at the local store after the day. Mrs. Mabel, the business owner, gives Kyle food and clothing. She even enrolls her in school. Bullies immediately target the small child, so she flees, never to return. As time passes, she and her father get closer and nicer. Kyle wants her dad to read a letter from her mother since she cannot read. Unfortunately, after this, the alcoholic destroys all her mother's stuff at home. The event greatly upset Kaya, but she didn't realize it was only the beginning of her issues. The next morning, her father also disappeared. No one cares about her anymore. Still, Kyle persists. She sells swamp mussels for other goods. Mrs. Maple sometimes helps her with groceries. Kyle wears Mrs. Maple's beautiful clothing to her first court appearance. Tom, her lawyer, believes she confessed pretended it was an accident. With this, she might serve 8 to 10 years in jail. Kyle claims she is not a killer and wants to leave jail quickly. She alleges the family lawyer tried to convict Kyle during the hearing. He claims no one would murder Chase better. Kyle adored him and wanted to marry him. This is likely why she summoned him to the tower and threw him off upon hearing this. Crowds turn on Kyle. They believe she killed her cherished lover. Fortunately, Tom is a competent lawyer. He claims Kyle should not be accused without proof since no footprints were found of the crime site. She has another flashback. The year is 1963. Kaya is now a lovely young lady. She lives alone in her home and does everything. Due to her love of nature, Kaya spends her leisure time wandering the woods and relaxing. A magnificent feather will be left for her one day. She gets another. Kaya got numerous feathers and letters. Tate Walker approaches her one evening and says he sent the gifts. Kaya says, I can't read. Thankfully, Tate is kind and always willing to assist. He teaches Kyle to read and write. They practice writing in the woods for the first several days. When Kaya is comfortable, she brings Tate home, asks him to teach. Kyle's grin returns, and their friendship strengthens slowly. Next, Tate is shown to be an ambitious student who wishes to attend a prestigious institution. He applied to many and awaits results. He invites Kaya to the city, but she rejects it. Kaya, who has always lived in the marsh, feels out of place in the city. Tate knows she won't alter her mind, so he gives up. Coupled after months, they wander and make out in the woods. They get so amorous that they nearly have sex. Tate withdraws at the last minute, promising he won't hurt her, impregnating her worries him. Tate eventually gets the news he wants the next day. He gets into his dream college, Dartmouth. He instantly tells Kaya the wonderful news. She feels irritated instead of joyful. Tate says Dartmouth is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to achieve something with his life. Although Kaya has never attended school, she flees, claiming all guys are the same. They'd been apart for a few days. Tate visits Kaya at her house one more night before leaving to spend time with her. The following morning, he says she knows everything about the local animals and plants. Tate suggests she create a book and submit it to a list of publishers. After thanking him, Kaya wonders whether their relationship is finished. Tate says he'll meet her on July 4. Kaya returns to her routine without him, but now she has something to do. The 4th of July came after months. Kaya greets Tate at the beach in the morning. Despite hours of waiting, he never arrives. Kaya sobs because she thinks he abandoned her. Presently, the officer who investigated the crime has been summoned to court without delay. In pursuit, he says the body 
had no fingerprints or footprints. He thinks they were effectively tracked. Tom suggests that the prints may have been caused by the area's regular high tide. He then pulls out a year-old petition, claiming the tower is significantly damaged. Climbers risk their lives. The audience is puzzled, and the case goes his way. Following this, the film returns to 1968. Taya had moved on from Tate after many years. She asks Mrs. Mabel about government officers and discovers them. The latter says they're developers buying land for hotels. This surprises Kaya, who refuses to leave the house. She files all her home papers with the developer. It proves she owns it. One issue remains. Kaya must pay over $800 in tax. She cannot earn this by selling shells. Kaya resumes writing. After weeks of effort, Tate's publishers will get her book once she finishes it. Kaya meets Chase, a gorgeous young guy, at the beach. They observe each other, but don't speak. Chase boldly invites her out the following day. When they meet again, Kaya, who's been single for years, accepts quickly. Thus, they start dating and spend most of their time together. She receives a message from a publisher indicating they will print her book. Kaya tells Chase the news, and he quickly proposes. Kaya glances at him for a moment before accepting as a sign of approval. She gives him a seashell necklace in this pursuit. His mother is testifying in court. The jewelry was not located on her son's corpse upon his death. She thinks Kaya killed him, stole his necklace, and erased the evidence. Tom advises against making a decision based on a lost necklace. No idea. Graduates from Dartmouth and returns home. Unfortunately, the following day, he works at the pier and sees Kaya with another person. He approaches Chase immediately, and they fight. They were separated by other employees that night. Thankfully, he goes home and says he couldn't come back because he was studying. After learning her worth, he will never abandon her. Tate says Chase is wicked and loves to toy with females' emotions. Unfortunately, Kaya doesn't believe him and tells him to go. Chase is all she wants now. Kyle discovers Chase is engaged to another woman. She terminates the connection quickly. Not everything is horrible for her. Kaya receives her book and $5,000 the following morning. She must also attend a crucial Greenville news conference. Kaya is thrilled to have made so much. She immediately clears the house and renovates it with the leftover money. Chase reappears when Kaya thinks she's forgotten him. He pretends to love her. Kaya won't tolerate such nonsense. Chase attempts to push himself on her after she begs him to go. Her rock hits his skull when nothing works. Before departing, Kaya tells Chase not to disturb her again or she will kill him. For the next several days, she hides from Chase. After a week, she attends the Greenville News Conference. In the present, Tom attempts to establish that Chase wasn't in the city during the murder. She attended a news conference in Greenville. Before ending his lecture, Tom said as it's virtually impossible to take a bus home, murder a person, erase all the evidence, and return. He said justice should be done. The judge rules after many hours. He denies guilt. He also apologizes to Kaya for the allegations in prison term. In the following scene, Kyle and Tate reunite and marry. After 50 years, they live contentedly in the swamp and work the same way. Kaya dies on her beloved boat in the closing moment as Tate goes through his wife's stuff. He finds her older book. Sometimes the predator must die for the prey to live. Tate then finds a chase picture using the same rationale I gave him. Its blood shows she killed him. Click subscribe for more videos like this and click another video to enjoy another best movie explained in less time.